Howdy everybody, Steve here, KM9G. Today I've got a couple of different things from you. I've got a QRP battery for your radio. I guess the battery itself isn't really QRP, but it's a battery for a QRP radio that's gonna get you your 10 watts out of your 6100, 6200, and out of your 705. And it's also gonna work with any of your other like LNR precision type radios that do 12 volts. Or if you get yourself some uh, ham adapter cables, it comes with the 12 volt trigger cable to get from USB-C to 5525 that we need for the 6100, but we're hams. We can make this thing work with anything. The other thing I got for you is the Chameleon Antenna. This is the Cha Blank and the 17 foot whip, and we're gonna get these running on the 6100. See how long we can make the battery last and how many contacts we can make on this antenna with this battery. Let's get to it. All right, we got a bunch of stuff going on here. Chameleon makes this survey tripod adapter, which would be pretty cool if I had one of those survey, surveyor tripod type things but I don't have one of those. What's really neat about it is it has a spot on the side for the banana plug radials to go in that Chameleon has, and then 3 8 24 on top, and then this is the surveyor tripod threads for underneath. And those surveyor tripods are pretty beefy. So we got that, get that out of the way. We have the Chameleon ground spike, and I've already put one of my flying radial leads on there to connect it over to my radial system, because you're gonna need ground radials for your 17 foot whip. This thing is resonant on 20 meters and up, and then you can work some tuner magic on it as well. The other thing I have here in my desk full of tricks is some coax from Chameleon. This is actually ABR coax that then Chameleon has branded and it's got the, the built-in choke. This will stop your coax from being a counterpoise. And then to make it all work, I have their new blank adapter. And this thing here will go on top of this guy and get me coax, which I need. And then this guy here, my 17 foot whip, will go on top of this thing. I'm gonna get this antenna set up, but before we do that, I wanna show you the battery and I wanna make sure the battery is fully charged. So there is our spike to go into the ground to hold the antenna up. Here is our adapter to go from spike to coax to antenna, and then there is our antenna. I have shown you guys the magic of these USB-C trigger cables. This one puts out 12 volts at 5 amps if it has it from the source and turns it into a 5521. I think there might actually already be that cable in here. Nope, I stole it for somewhere else. But this is also my 6100 Go Box, and this is an amazing little Go Box that holds everything in it that you need. I have the battery that we're going to be playing with today. This is from W0AEZ, and it's a 18650 style cell. It might be a 21100. I'm not sure. I'd have to open it up and take a look at it, but we already did that in a previous video. And it's got a little on off switch over here on the side so I can see how much charge it has. It's saying 99%. Let me get this charging to get it that full 100. All right, that is plugged in. And then we've got the AM broadcast band filters from K9DP. These things help keep your, uh, your radio sane when you're near a strong AM broadcast station. And I have those in a little, little bag that I found somewhere along the line. This, this actually came with another battery pack that I have that also works very well for turning QRP radios into slightly higher powered radios. Did a video on that a while back as well. I've got the KM4 CFT microphone in here. And this has got my call sign on it. And this is much smaller than the microphone that Zygu ships with. And then the radio itself. And like I said, we're going to test it out on this radio. It's going to work on a bunch of other QRP rigs, but I got to test it on at least one, right? And if we put all of this stuff back in, it actually all fits in with the lid closed. All sealed up and ready to go. And the cool thing about this is it's so small that it fits inside of another backpack. The only thing I'm missing out of this kit is an antenna at this point. And I love antennas. There's so many different ones to play with. So I'm gonna get this antenna set up and we're gonna take a look at it. And we're gonna get this battery finished charging and get on the air. We're gonna do some FT8 just to pull as much power as we can out. I have my coax here with the choke put towards the antenna side of things. Let me get this guy in. We had a nice rain yesterday, so this is probably going to go in pretty easily. Good enough. All right, that's all set up. Let's get these radials attached. And there is our antenna setup. We got a little bit of a lean going on, but that's not going to hurt anything. It's going to give me a little bit more takeoff in that direction. These sheriffs are 
going to be amazed by what I'm doing. We are at 100% charge on the W0AEZ battery. We have the radio plugged in to the computer running WSJTX, and this is running on its internal battery. And it actually just died. Let's see if we can turn it back on. But I wanted to give this thing a good test and get it all set up first, and then plug in the battery. So let's take a look real quick. We'll do app, we'll do SWR scan to test out the antenna. This is that 17 foot whip outside. Look at that thing. Change the speed a little bit so it doesn't take forever. There's 14074, but we're flat all the way across the band now that we're finally into the 20 meter band. Looking pretty good. Low battery. Let's get some power plugged into this thing. The W0AEZ battery only has one port on it and that is for the USB-C connection. And we just lost the 6100 again. Not enough power. I don't want this battery here to be charging the internal battery in here. I think that's in radio settings one. Charger is set to on. We better turn that off real quick. Charger set to off, excellent. And we have power set to five watts. Let's turn that up to 10 and let's see what we can do. I'm gonna do a tune over here on WSJTX which is going to make the radio do something, I hope, of course not. I think because the radio powered off out from underneath of FL rig, that was the problem that we had. So yep, we're working now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a time log, 11.45, and battery's at 100%, and we're going to start transmitting. So we're now calling CQ, and the radio just came out of transmit mode. Let's take a look. There we go. Now we can see the radio in transmit mode. Red light over here. We've got 100 on the ALC. We're putting out 10 watts. The radio showing 9 watts on its meter. Looking pretty good. And we are being heard all over the United States right now. Excellent. And now it's just some data logging stuff that y'all don't want to see. I'll come back when the data logging is all done, let you know how long this battery lasted doing 10 watts of FT8, which as you guys know, is what we call a full duty cycle mode. This is about as much punishment as you can give this battery in a radio setting to verify that it works. We're gonna make some contacts while we do it, which is the part that I like. I get to do two things. I get to torture a battery and make some contacts on the air. All right, let me turn that down a little bit. We're done with FT8 for a while. First off, I wanna say I reached out to Kevin during the process of making this video, Kevin W0AEZ, the guy that makes this battery that we're talking about today, the whole subject of the video. And Kevin is awesome. He said, this battery, when he ships it to you, it needs to learn the BMS card inside of the plastic case needs to learn the battery itself inside of the plastic case. I don't know why I'm so tongue-tied today. And so the numbers on the screen are gonna be a little bit off until maybe the fifth or sixth time that you cycle the battery. And I have seen that before on a lot of different batteries. So it wasn't shocking to me to hear it, but it was good to confirm the reason why I was seeing the data. Speaking of data, let's take a look at the data. So this is what I got on my first tryout. I got nine contacts. I was running 10 watts. I started at 11.45 and then I noticed a little bit after 1247 that the battery had died and the radio was off. So that was why I reached out to Kevin. And that's about an hour's worth of usage at 10 watts, nine contacts. I recharged the battery and started all over again and I forgot that I was at five watts, oops. So I canceled that test and then recharged the battery and then started another test. And this one gave me kind of the same results, 322 to 429, a little over an hour at 65%, it died. And I didn't catch the contacts on that. I fully recharged the battery, started again at 710 to 837. So about an hour and a half, I got 14 contacts again at 10 watts. And again, it died somewhere after 72%. So what the heck, let's just do it one more time. Let's do it at five watts this time. I got 12 contacts at five watts, which is pretty cool. And this time I felt like I wasn't gonna get a full 10 or 12 contacts out of it because there was one period where I was just calling CQ over and over and over again. But we started at 1254 and then I noticed that the power was dropping pretty fast on the, on the percentage fuel gauge type thing. So I started watching it a little more closely. So you can see these are only like two minutes apart or whatnot. So 1254 to 212, so that's, one o'clock to two o'clock to 2.15, so an hour and 15 minutes-ish. Yeah, a little bit of grace in both directions, whatever. But still not a terrible amount of time longer than before. Enough, but not a lot. So that actually made me think, does the radio draw less amps at five watts than 10 watts? So I stuck it on my power meter. At standby, this radio draws 0 0.2 amps. At five watts, it draws, five watts transmit, it draws 1.4 amps, and at 10 watts transmit, it draws 1.9 amps. So that's actually really good efficiency. This standby is just straight receive where it's doing nothing. 
So I've got it on the charger again, and we're charging the internal battery from an external power supply. And then this battery is definitely going in the case. So that way I've got 10 watts on this battery and when it dies, it automatically drops back to five watts and keeps going on the internal battery. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the whole thing. And I like to do these kind of rundown tests. Can you get a park activated? Yes. Can you do it on FT8 digital modes with just this battery? Well, you need one for your laptop too, but the short answer is given good band conditions, yes. I was able to get 12 contacts before the battery died on one run. I was able to get 14 contacts before the battery died on another run. I was able to get nine contacts on FT8. FT8 uses more power and takes longer than doing single sideband for parks on the air. If you're really good, I know for a fact that I could easily double that number of contacts in that time period. And I've probably done it on video before. One of these days I need to go out and see what my QSOs per hour is and see what my record is for how many QSOs you can make. And that's one of the things I like about ham radio. You just set your own challenges, whatever they happen to be. Will this battery last more than an hour? Can I make more contacts on FT8 than I can on sideband? Is this a better antenna than that antenna? There are links for all the stuff that I showed in the video, the battery and the chameleon antenna and the blank and the spike and the surveyor thing down in the description below if you want to play along at home. There's also a a discount code at Radiodity to save you $15 on the X6100. And I'll include some more information on the Go Bag because this, this right here is perfect. Be able to take a bag and stick it inside of the rest of your travel bag for the day. Can't beat that. One bag to rule them all with lots and lots of little bags inside of it. That's why this is really fun for me is to experiment with all of these different things. And if you like experimenting, then this is the channel for you. Right below the video, there is a subscribe button. If you hit that, then angels will come down from heaven and bless your antenna with SWR grease. Probably not, but it's a thought. Anyway, I mean, try it. What's the worst that can happen? You see another video about cool stuff to do in ham radio? There's a video right over here, speaking of other videos, that you might find interesting. Thanks for being awesome. I'll see you over there.